Hello everyone. This chapter discusses biomes and biodiversity. Very interesting chapter and <clears throat> um, a lot of good images to reinforce what's going on with um, the different um, items that each biome contains. So, uh, different types of biomes, okay. We uh, see that this map is giving you uh, annual precipitation, uh, temperature, what kinds of uh, what kinds of um, conditions each of these areas require. <clears throat> this is a, as you can see, this is a big overview, so I'm going to uh, move through these images quickly, but this chapter in your book, uh, it, it really does have a lot of information in it, so this is, this is one of the chapters you really want to read thoroughly and make sure you understand the different um, topics that are covered. Okay, we've got all sorts of information about vertical zonation and so forth and different types of biomes and what makes the biome a specific, uh, either it's a tropical or if it's a grassland. You know, usually the biome is, is labeled for its plant materials. So, just to give you a hint. Um, I'm just going to flip through these. You can, you can read through these and, in your book and get more information. A lot of our uh, temperate forests and evergreen with, and deciduous um, trees in them, these in America uh, have been pretty much wiped out. Uh, when the uh, European settlers came over here, yes, we had these huge forests of evergreens and, and deciduous trees and well, basically they were the trees were used to make the homes and they were cleared out to farm the hillside. So a lot of our <clears throat> original forests were wiped out, but we still have some. Um, so you can look at any, any um, natural um, United States map and it, it will show you some of the areas, especially in the Blue Ridge Mountains and those types of areas where there still remain a, a few, well, I want to say a few, because what it used to be was the entire um, northeastern area of the United States was covered with these trees and now of course there's cities and home housing developments and so really only in the in the protected areas we have major quantities of these um, beautiful trees but anyway moving along just one of my um, I get on my soapbox okay let me jump down and you know different just different just more different um, uh, classifications of bio, um, the biomes here and what makes a tundra. And unless you go to Alaska, you may not see a tundra <laughs> or, or Canada. Uh, marine ecosystems, well, these marine ecosystems, the remember we talked about earlier, the trophic levels, well, the phytoplankton and the plankton, these are the... <clears throat> The, the bottom of the of the trophic level these are the producers and they you know start there and then then we go to those consumers and so forth so marine ecosystems and productivity 
It's a pretty cool picture. Different layers of the ocean. You may want to review those. A nice uh, vertical scale of uh, the different zones. Estuary and waters. These are the waters coming out fresh and then they mix with the salt. A big um, biodiversity in those estuaries. Lots of uh, um, fish nurseries are in there. It talks about thermal vents and what organisms lives there. Different kinds of um, reefs and these types of communities. And our shoreline with the mangrove, protected mangroves. <clears throat> freshwater ecosystems and you know how a lot of times there will be a nice lake that someone put in and basically they cut the grass all the way to the water's edge well this this area here is called the littoral zone and it's very important for um, fish and birds and snails and all the little invertebrates they live in this area and they breed and they provide food and shelter and and the fish can then go in here and breed and you know lay their eggs and the little baby fish can be protected and and we have a lot even on campus we have all these um, stormwater runoff um, bodies of water that that are just sitting there that that could be planted and they could really be an be a nice habitat for wildlife but somebody has to take the initiative and get out there and and um, help help with that and not only here at the college but all housing developments you know we could help the environment we could go out and, and help wildlife by planting littoral zones in all of these um, retention ponds and water retention lakes in these housing developments and so forth. And, and then fish would breed in there and they could stock, stock these areas with fish and then the fish would breed and grow and then people could use these as uh, fishing lakes. It'd be kind of nice and birds would come and the birders could watch the birds and it'd be very nice. Anyway, moving along. You just read about these th places and, and read about the different, different wetland habitats and understand the differences in them. And a big part of this chapter is biodiversity and, you know, what, what it means and how, it, how, it, how come it's so important and um, just this whole... Um, end of this chapter talks about biodiversity and <clears throat> that it's threatened and what we're doing maybe to protect it and you can read through all of these things <clears throat> what things uh, are invasive in North America and perhaps you've seen some of these or heard of some of these organisms mosquitoes you see bringing disease uh, endangered species protection endangered species act we have we have this to protect animals and plants and um, prevents uh, developers from just coming in and wiping them out if there is a uh, an organism that is identified as an endangered species then they have to do studies and perhaps even move those organisms or they do not get their permits just depends there are different uh, levels of these organisms um, keystone species Indicator species, these are it's very important. Keystone species, 
Here we have our uh, gopher tortoise and our alligator. These are keystone species. They provide, basically they provide housing for other species because they, uh, the, the gopher tortoise digs, digs a hole and that hole goes down for many, many, many feet and snakes and mice and insects go down there and live with that um, gopher tortoise. The gopher tortoise doesn't care. He That's just his home and he, he invites everyone to live in there and he really has nothing to say about it. They just make themselves at home. Um, so he provides a, a shelter for other species and if he was gone then those other species would be in a dilemma because then their home would be gone. The alligator does somewhat the same. The alligator in the um, dry season it will dig it will dig these big holes and then all the water will collect in these big holes they're called alligator holes and fish and birds and everybody will congregate in these alligator holes during the dry season. So if the alligator didn't dig those holes then everything would dry up and then there would be no fish and birds and you know so forth. Indicator species this is another type of an organism that can <clears throat> let you know something is going on in the environment and indicator species usually are birds or amphibians. We have a lot of uh, amphibians that have indicated that some lakes are have possible poisons in them and we see a lot of dead amphibians or we see a lot of uh, tumors growing on these amphibians because their skin is um, is so sensitive to where they are living they live in the water or near the water. They have their skin has to be moist constantly, and therefore those chemicals are constantly bombarding the uh, amphibian skin. And so these tumors and or an extra leg, you know, it just these are the indicator species. They tell us that something is going on, and we should um, take heed to be aware. Um, you can go over some more of these uh, different different uh, Endangered Species Act comments and topics. Success story of the bald eagle, um, habitat protection, and and so forth. That's basically what the rest of the chapter is about. So we want to protect our biodiversity. We want to protect our our planet. And that's the essence of this chapter. So until next time, have a good day.